Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Numbers chapter 25. While Israel was staying at Shittim, the men began to indulge in sexual immorality with the Moabite women, who invited them to the sacrifices of their gods. The people ate the sacrificial meal and bowed down before these gods. So Israel yoked themselves to the Baal of Peor, and the Lord's anger burned against them. The Lord said to Moses, Take all the leaders of these people, kill them, and expose them in broad daylight before the Lord, so that the Lord's fierce anger may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to Israel's judges, Each of you must put to death those of your people who have yoked themselves to the Baal of Peor. Then an Israelite man brought into the camp a Midianite woman right before the eyes of Moses and the whole assembly of Israel while they were weeping at the entrance to the tent of meeting. When Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saw this, he left the assembly, took a spear in his hand, and followed the Israelite into the tent. He drove the spear into both of them, right through the Israelite man, and into the woman's stomach. Then the plague against the Israelites was stopped, but those who died in the plague numbered 24,000. The Lord said to Moses, Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, has turned my anger away from the Israelites, since he was zealous for my honor among them. I did not put an end to them in my zeal. Therefore, tell him I'm making my covenant of peace with him. He and his descendants will have a covenant of lasting priesthood because he was zealous for the honor of his God and made atonement for the Israelites. The name of the Israelite who was killed with the Midianite woman was Zimri, son of Salu, the leader of a Simeonite family. And the name of the Midianite woman who was put to death was Kozbi, daughter of Zur, a tribal chief of a Midianite family. The Lord said to Moses, Treat the Midianites as enemies and kill them. They treated you as enemies when they deceived you in Peor in the incident involving their sister Kozbi, the daughter of a Midianite leader, the woman who was killed when the plague came as a result of that incident. And so, friends, we see here a very sad episode in Israel's history. The Moabite women somehow came and seduced some of the Israelite men to be involved not only in sexual sin, but in the worship of their gods, the sacrificial meal and the worship of their gods. And so how did this happen? Well, we find out later in chapter 31 of the book of Numbers that they followed the advice of Balaam and enticed the Israelites to be unfaithful to the Lord. And so all of this episode that we just read through was a result of Balaam's advice that's not recorded in his prophecies that we went through in chapter 22, 23, and 24. But privately, apparently, he had some advice, and the advice was, through sexual sins, you can entice the Israelite men to worship foreign gods and to be unfaithful to their God, and the Lord will turn against them. So it's a very sad thing. Now, one more word on the Uh, Balaam's advice and the sexual sin, then we'll review this chapter a, a bit more. But in the book of Revelation, there's a passage that you may have heard of or may have read and wondered about. It's Revelation chapter 2, verse 14. I'll read it. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. There are some among you who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin. So they ate the food sacrificed to idols, and committed sexual immorality. And so this sin of Balaam is referred to in Revelation chapter 2, and it's specifically mentioned that they ate food sacrificed to idols, and they committed sexual immorality. So this was still a problem 1,500 years later in the church that John wrote to in Revelation chapter 2. The sin of Balaam was still playing out against the Jewish people, against the Israelites, against the people of God. So let's look at chapter 25, uh, verse 1. While Israel was staying at Shittim, the men began to indulge in sexual immorality with Moabite women, who invited them to the sacrifices of their gods. 
The people ate the sacrificial meal and bowed down before these gods. So Israel yoked themselves with the Baal of Peor, and the Lord's anger burned against them. And so we've got this situation. We don't know how widespread it was, but apparently it was fairly widespread. And these uh, sexual episodes uh, with the Jewish men and the Moabite women were taking place and this um, worship of the foreign gods. And then the Lord said to Moses, take all the leaders of these people, kill them and expose them in broad daylight before the Lord so that the Lord's fierce anger may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to Israel's judges, uh, each of you must put to death those of your people who have indulged in this sexual sin and the worship of foreign gods. And at that point, a Jewish man blatantly rose up and tried to demonstrate that he'd do whatever he jolly well pleased. So it says an Israelite man brought into the camp a Midianite woman right before the eyes of Moses and the whole assembly of Israel while they were weeping at the tent of meeting. And so this man with the intent to have sex with this Moabite woman, paraded her through the camp in front of Moses and everybody that was repenting and everybody in the midst of being judged. And he went on to his tent and proceeded to have sex with her. In verse 7, when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw this, he left the assembly, took a spear in his hand, and followed the Israelite into the tent. He drove the spear through both of them, and this apparently appeased the Lord, because it says, Then the plague against the Israelites was stopped, but those who died in the plague numbered 24,000. So the Lord's anger had broken out, and it was turned by the zeal of Phinehas, son of Eleazar. And Eleazar is the son of Aaron. So the zeal of the Lord responded against this sin by killing the man who caused this blatant affront to the will of Yahweh in front of all the people. He was slain, and so was the woman he had sex with. And so the Lord honored this Phineas. In verse 10, the Lord said to Moses, Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned my anger away from the Israelites, since he was as zealous for my honor among them as I am. I did not put an end to them in my zeal. Therefore, tell him I am making my covenant of peace with him. He and his descendants will have a covenant of a lasting priesthood because he was zealous for the honor of his God and made atonement for the Israelites. And so, thank God, this man took a righteous stand. Sadly, it was a matter of life and death, and he executed judgment on this man and woman that were deliberately thwarting the will of God and blatantly sinning in the sight of all the people. Apparently, that was something that had to be done because the Lord was appeased and honored him for it. And so, Lord, uh, this is an extreme example. But may we be among those who stand for you. May we forbid what you forbid. May we allow what you allow. May we stand righteously against those things that offend you. May we be found faithful on the Lord's side, come what may. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.